I love the 44 Special cartridge, and I thought I would come out today and just compare some different 44 Special cartridges. You know, I really appreciate the cartridge more than most people probably do. It's something I've really appreciated for a long time because it is so incredibly versatile. It is more versatile than a 38 Special, even a 357 Magnum. So I'm going to come out here, I'm going to test some different cartridges here, and there's a lot of different choices, and that's what makes it such an interesting cartridge. You can go down to some really low-end cartridges, like basic target ammo and some of the basic self-defense ammo out there, but then you can also go kind of mid-range here and high-range, and that's kind of what I got going on here. So I'm going to test some various different styles, and we can really see the versatility of the cartridge. Starting over here, we have a bonded jacket at a hollow point, 200 grain bullet. That's your classic self-defense round. We have a TAC XP and is solid copper and a hollow point. We have wad cutters. We have 255 grain Keith style semi wad cutters. That's for like big game. Then we have some 190 grain, just basic semi wad cutter hollow points. And all of these will kind of fill a different purpose. So let me explain a little bit more about the 44 special cartridge now. All right, here's some size comparison with some gold dot ammunition here. Here's our 380 ACP. Here's our 38 Special. Here's our 357 Magnum. Here's our 44 Special, and here's our 45 ACP. So we can see that our size diameter is about the same as our 45 ACP, a little bit smaller, significantly bigger round than our 357 Magnum, but a little shorter, about the same overall length as the 38 Special, but basically fatter. A lot bigger than our 380 ACP here. So our 44 Special started with our 44 American cartridge. Right around 1870, there was a cartridge, and it was one of the first metallic cartridges out there, you know, that wasn't cap and ball. It actually took a cartridge case, and that was the 44 American, and it was a healed bullet, so it tapered down and went in the case. Now, right around that same time, there was people in Russia, the Russian... Um, embassy and all that they wanted to have a cartridge and they wanted america to make it more or less and they actually requested that uh instead of being a heel bullet it was all the way inside the case so what they essentially did was they took that 44 caliber bullet and they smushed it down added lube grooves and put it inside the case and created the 44 russian for a contract with russia and what that did is this is the place where a 44 went from 44 diameter down to 429. They had to bring it down to 429 to fit the inside the case. So ever since then, 1870, everything that's 429 in that cartridge family is considered the 44 caliber. And that's where that kind of came from. So the 44 Russian was a pretty good cartridge from about 1870 up to 1907. And that's when the development of the 44 Special came about. And the 44 Special is simply a long, long inver longer version. And it didn't really bring much to the table at the time. And it increased the, the pressure up a little bit, but it really didn't have super high performance. But right around that time, after 1907, before the introduction of the 44 Magnum, essentially hand loaders and everybody else was taking that cartridge and they were putting up basically some of it up to 44 Magnum power levels, but a lot of variance in between. And that's still where we are right now with the 44 Special. Its capability is that you don't necessarily have to go up to a 44 Magnum to get really good performance. You have a lot of different varieties that you can, you can do it a lot of different tasks, a lot of different varieties of ammo is what I mean to say. So you can go all the way from light loads, like we got this 200 grain load here, it's just a gold dot, that's your personal defense round, all the way up to this 255 grain Keith. And that could take pretty much a grizzly bear if you needed it to. So you have a lot more versatility than what you have with like a 38 Special or even a 357 Magnum, because with 357 Mag, you're pretty much maxing out on 180 grain. You know, that 255 grain, you can even go up to 300 grain. That's got a lot of bone crushing ability. But then when you get stuff like this, that's pretty low powered. It's about as powerful as a nine millimeter. And it expands out real big and you got a pretty good personal defense round. And one neat thing about the 44 Special is this decibel levels are pretty low. And a lot of people worry about that. And I wrote some numbers down here for its decibel numbers. But basically, when we look at a 380 ACP, 157.7 decibels, 9 millimeter, 159.8, going up higher. 357 mag, 164.3. A 44 special is 
for your average round like this. Less than a 380 ACP, which means it's gonna cost less hearing damage if you had to fire this without hearing protection, yet it is more effective than a 380 ACP by far. So it's a very unique cartridge, and the reason why it's quiet essentially is because the pressure in these are very low. You know, the pressure for a typical 44 Special, not highly loaded, like this is going to be something like 15,000 PSI, as where even a standard pressure 38 Special, 17,000. But there's more powder in this with less pressure, so you're still getting the performance, but you're not having all that sound from the pressure. Very good cartridge in that sense. So I'm gonna test some different rounds here and some ballistics gel here. And I'm gonna use my Smith & Wesson model 69 and 44 mag with a four and a quarter inch barrel. You know, the reason why I purchased this revolver initially was to test 44 Special. I had intended to get like a Charter Arms Bulldog and 44 Special because I love the cartridge so much. But I found this revolver for only about $200 more than the Charter Arms uh, Target Bulldog, which has a four inch barrel. I'm like, well, this is chambered in 44 mag. I've wanted it for a long time anyway, so it makes more sense to get something like this when I'm gonna be firing warm loads through it because we all know our the Charter Arms is not really built for shooting really warm ammunition through it. But over the past two and a half years, I've been shooting a lot of magnums through this because it kind of got away from me that, you know, the purpose why I bought this. But the reason why I'm doing this video here is because I wanted to come back to that purpose. That I never got around to really just focusing on the 44 Special cartridge. So I've chronographed all this stuff in the past and I'm gonna do a ballistic test and I'm gonna do our real world test through all of these where I'm gonna have denim. I'm gonna have our bone simulation or rib simulation through every one of these shots I take. And I'm gonna film this in slow motion so it looks really clear. So it's gonna be looking a little different than what I normally do. But this ammunition here, here's our bulldog here. It's called the bulldog ammunition from um, Charter Arms because it's meant for firing through the bulldog. It's a 200 grain. I got 909 feet per second with this in the past, 367 foot pounds energy. And by the way, a lot of this I have not ran through gel. Is back when I first got this, and I was running it through water jugs. So I'm really interested to see what I get in gel here. Our next one is our TAC XP. This is a 200 grain. And I got, um, I don't know, if, I got 1070 feet per second in the past in this gun which is 508 foot-pounds energy, very powerful cartridge. We've got our wad cutters here. This is a 200 grain hard cast wad cutter, 1,003 feet per second, 447 foot-pounds energy. So you can kind of see a trend here. The 44 Special is a little bit more powerful than even like 45 ACP most of the time. So 255 grain hard cast, 942 feet per second, 502 foot-pounds energy, decent load there. Now these two here, they're essentially the same. Our Buffalo bore and our Underwood. I'll, I'm only going to run one of these because it's a, the identical bullet, except one is powder coated. Uh, but in the past here, these are 190 grains. I was averaging between different tests I did, 1,082 feet per second with our Buffalo bore version and 1,083 <laughs> with our Underwood version. So that's 494 and 495 foot-pounds energy uh, pretty decent powered loads there for what they are so i'm gonna hit our ballistics gel block with these we'll see how they compare and we'll give that 44 special some love and we'll see you know the differences because there's going to be some pretty significant differences and that's what makes this thing so versatile you know most cartridges you can't just like get something that penetrates a little bit and expands a lot and then get something that's going to massively penetrate and the 44 special is that special cartridge that is really good at doing that so let's hit our ballistics gel block now all right let's just get to hitting this thing uh four layers of denim three inches of clear ballistics to represents our pectoral muscle quarter inch medium density fiber board represents our ribs ribs and sternum so first up we're going to have that bulldog round here and i keep calling it that because that's what um underwood calls it it's our gold dot bullet 200 grain Let's see what this does let's hit something else in there tac xp this is actually my preferred round. It's a really good cartridge for what it is. See what this does. Try something else.
I'm going to do the buffalo bore version of that 190 grain semi wad cutter. See how this does. <laughs> Let's move on. Two hundred grain hardcast wad cutter. Try that. <laughs> There's our two hundred fifty five grain Keith. A lot of bullet mass here. Let's see what this does. <laughs> Let's go take a look. All right, so what we got here is pretty good performance with a lot of this stuff and our quote unquote real world uh, simulation here. Um, with our first cartridge here, with our bulldog round, we got really good expansion even through that ribs or sturm simulation. We got about 12 and a quarter inches of penetration. Our TAC XP, we got right there at about 14 and a half inches. And then we hit it with that soft cast um, hollow point. And the, the penetration is identical, even though the bullet looks like it's uh, further up. You can actually see that behind this is that our TAC XP actually sucked back just a hair. So both at about 14 and a quarter inches. So our lead free one though, caused a lot more damage back in there. And then you saw me set up a towel up there because I knew we were gonna get a lot of penetration with that Keith bullet. And we certainly did. We passed through the entire thing. I was thinking, yeah, well, maybe I can catch that bullet with the, this towel here and now it just blew right through, I don't know, 12 layers of that stuff. So we can definitely see our versatility of one cartridge being mid 300 foot pounds. We're hitting just 12 inches of penetration. The next one is going through, um, well, 35 inches plus some MDF and a bunch of towel as well. So we can see that, you know, there's a lot to love with this cartridge because the versatility is extraordinary is extraordinary versatility and then we have our wad cutter here i forgot to mention that this is kind of our in between here well we got about 21 and a half inches with that we actually have a lot of damage up in here we got what some might consider over penetration but really i think that that's kind of the go between there because you know a 44 wad cutter you know, it didn't expand, but it's 44. It's not gonna get any smaller. And what we're seeing there is that that could, you know, perform a lot of different purposes. That's right in the middle of something good where you could potentially use it as a woods load. It's gonna bust through bone differently than what like a hollow point would. And yet it's still not gonna have extreme over penetration if you had to use it for personal defense. So what's not to love with all this stuff here? You know, it's performing all very, very well. So what I want to do now is I want to shoot up my steel. I haven't got any paint yet for that. I've been out the last couple of videos I've filmed. Uh, just haven't been in the town to get any paint. But oh well, you know, when you're out trying to defend yourself, you're not going to have perf perfect visibility in any way. So let me see how these all these different cartridges kind of perform compared to each other. 
All right, so some basic shootability here. We got 25 yards. So I just want to see how these all these compare for controllability and my ability to hit the target with these. So I have a couple rounds of those TAC XP. Those have been my preferred preferred round for a while. Let me see how they shoot from 25. All right. Now what I have is those bulldog rounds, those 200 grain, and these are lightly loaded, but you know still a good amount of power. Let's see what these will do. All right, let me try something different. Hard cast wad cutter is kind of the in-between here. Pretty good cartridge overall. Let's see how they shoot for me. Whole lot of smoke going on. All right, next up I have a mix of these uh, Underwoods and Buffalo Boar that had the same velocity, 190 grain hollow points. Uh, let me run a couple of the underwoods first. Actually, let me rearrange this. Let me run three of the underwoods and then the last two are the buffalo boar. We'll see if there's any difference. So there's our underwood semi wide cutter hollow points, three of them. They smell really odd. Buffalo boar. Buffalo boars have a slightly less recoil, and that's kind of why I threw that one shot. It just kind of surprised me with this recoil, and it smells really weird. Buffalo boar ones don't smell weird. <laughs> now the hardest one to control, probably, because it's going to have the most bullet weight, our hard cast of uh, 255 grain, or our um, kind of a fair round, in a sense. In a sense, let me try that. All right, we got our hard cast 255 grain. Let's see how these do. that hard to control to be honest uh, and that's what's cool about that you know you got something that's probably going to be more effective than a 357 mag almost as effective as a 44 magnum but still controllable it's a really perfect medium there why not back up i love doing that shoot for some distance see if i can get some hits i always have fun with that all right i decided to come back to 100 yards why not it is a 44 what if you had to use it to take something an animal i don't know Always hard to shoot from back here. That tree's in the way, I need to clear that out. And I don't have flat footing here, that's why I never come back this far. Rarely, but let's see here. I have a bulldog, bulldog. I have two bulldogs in here, bulldog gold dot rounds. And uh, after that, I have the um, semi wad cutter hollow point, 190 grain. So. Let's see how these bulldogs do, if I can make an impact at that distance. Oh yeah. Oh, I pulled it a little bit. Now here's those weird smelling ones. thought I could hit those easy after I made that first one. All right, now I move on to the hard cast 255 grain. These are the ones that would really realistically matter. This is the only thing you might be able to like actually shoot like maybe a deer at that distance and hit it. So let me try a hand at single action with one of these. Maybe I can tell where they're hitting if I miss. Oh. Huh. I'll try double. Ah. I don't know where those hit. I really wanted to make some hits. I, I can't stop now. I want to shoot some more at this distance. This is fun. All right. I got more of those uh, Underwood ones, those hollow points that smell kind of weird. So. 100 yards, you know, I really like this gun. This is the, the trigger pull on this and double action is the lightest and the smoothest I have all of my Smith & Wessons. I put the X-frame grip on this revolver. So it's the only revolver I have currently that I can fit my hand on perfectly, actually get a proper finger position. 
still wrap my thumbs without my thumbs actually getting in the way so because of that i like to shoot it double action more than single action i'm actually usually more accurate that way so 100 yards try to make some more hits i'll try to see where these are hitting i think they're hitting low oh i'm not doing so good I'll leave that in my, my videos because you know, sometimes people get frustrated when they, they see me hit at 75 yards every time. I do have my limitations. <laughs> see what I can do. Right below. Ah, so. 100 yards, not so good. Oh well, I had fun trying. Uh, so our 44 Special, I love the 44 Special. That's the whole point of this video, I just love it. It is a great cartridge because its versatility is just all the way up there. It's a lot more fun to shoot in a lot of regard when you're shooting even basic uh, target, like 246 grain lead round nose bullets. It is and isn't, I mean the ammo is ridiculously expensive if you don't hand load it. But what you're doing is you're pushing a cartridge that's no more powerful than a 38 Special, but when it hits something like steel, it really rings the thing, it knocks it around. Um, then you have the mid-range loads that are just across the board more powerful than 38 Special. You know, your basic, just jack at a hollow point, 44 Special is typically about as powerful as a nine millimeter. And then you load the higher end up on, on 44 Special, you know, they're not really considered plus P because the pressures are so incredibly low, even when they're loaded max up like that. They're less pressure than a 38 plus P, but yet we're hitting over 500 foot pounds energy very easily. So that's when the cartridges start to really get fun. But, you know, it's very, very versatile. And that's what I really like about it. You could do basically anything with it. You can get bullets that are really light, 165 grain, load plinker loads, or you could load some 300 grain bullets in there if you want and stop a grizzly bear so it, it just has a lot going for it so that's something i just really wanted to do today was to test some different varieties of different power levels and bullet styles and see how they compare so that's what you get today so as always comment share and like and thanks for watching